YouTube, what is up? Scrag101 here. Doing a uh, video response to uh, Sean Gately from Blue Table Paintings, a uh, little evaluation on 8th edition. Sean, glad to see that you still know something about fantasy. I was worried that, you know, since I had stopped schooling you so long ago that, you know, maybe you'd just given it up and stuck strictly to round base games. Anyway, glad to see you, uh, you're still interested and seem to actually know some, uh, some pretty good stuff about it. Back to the subject. 8th edition. It's here. I have not played Fantasy Battle in dang near two years. Why? Well, the, the, the Fantasy Army that I roll, Ogres, with every new edition of book coming out, has just been getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Now, with these changes that they've done to infantry, um, I'm happy to say that it looks like ogres are, are potentially going to be some pretty contending army, a pretty contending army on the, uh, the table now. Uh, reason being, uh, the doing away with the force org, basically. Um, making all previous special rules and books that you know you had to take one of these to take one of these you only could take one of these unless you had this that kind of a thing um, it's been eliminated um, there's a special little paragraph side note thing in here I don't have the page mark but on uh, the unit selection you know picking your army there is a, uh, a little section and in talking with a couple people they overlooked it which I was kind of you know thinking was kind of funny here on page 134 make sure you guys read this basically I'll uh, I'll uh, cut it down it says uh, in a one-off and contradiction to the principles under basic rules and advanced rules uh, this system that they have put here on page 134 135 for selecting your army this system overrides all the other systems in every older book. So what that means is things like you have to take one unit of bulls in your army because you're an ogre army. That's gone. Same thing with Bretonians. You have to have one unit of realm knights. That's gone. Um, any zero to one restrictions. Those are gone. Um, the, the old requirements that those used to fulfill those requirements don't exist in the game anymore. So this has really, really opened up a lot of options. One thing with Ogres was we were really pigeonholed into taking one of two types of main lists, magic heavy or very, you know, infantry heavy lists, um, kind of an MSU or minimum, minimum unit size um, or minimum strength unit um, size list. So this has really opened some doors to things that weren't really possible before. The other thing that's great is magic has kind of been balanced um, to the best that I can see that it is. You know, they still give some slight advantages to taking more wizards, but it's very slight. One in six chances of slight. Um, when generating an extra power dice per wizard, you only get a power dice if you roll a six. Um, you get 2d6 worth of power dice at the beginning uh, through the winds of magic. Um, on average, you're going to be generating seven power dice. Uh, I know uh, Sean likes to, to believe in lady averages because she's you know not quite as pretty as Lady Luck, but she comes around a lot more often. Uh, anyway, so lady averages is going to generally give you seven power dice um, with you know the potential of maybe one or two extra if you have a lot of mages. Um, with my ogre army, the way that I like to run it is with one butcher. I'm looking at generating an average of seven dice where before I was generating no more than four dice. So I've gained three. Most armies that I would face, you know, I'd have four power dice. They'd have two or three mages with, you know, their base of two plus another three, four. You know, they have as many dispel dice as I had power dice. Um, that's that's kind of gone away now. They get whatever I roll as my highest dice of that 2d6 in dispel dice. And then they have a chance of getting an extra dispel dice based on how many mages they have. So really, what it's looked at, like, what it looks like to me is that um, single mage armies are going to be fairly competitive um, for ogres, especially because we get to have every spell in the lore because we're ogres. But for other armies, you know, they've kind of gotten stuck with, well, if you're level two mage, you get two spells. Yeah, you have seven power dice. 
but you know casting's a little bit different. So there's 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 some great things there. Um, both pluses and minuses to ogres. One, ogres are not going to be deep rank units like halberds or spearmen or you know any other close combat infantry. You're going to see ogres in maybe three ranks at most, at most, and probably not going to see them in three ranks unless they're six wide. So the steadfast rule comes into play quite a bit with ogres. However, that's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a trade and balance, and it seems like they've really looked at some things that one army type isn't going to be able to do well, which is ogres. Ogres aren't going to stand well. It's say, you know, they charge in against a unit of spearmen. Um, they're going to get attacked first because they have low in initiative, but they're going to cause impact hits when they come in first, so there's, you know, kind of a trade-off there. You, on average, you know, you're going to do about as many impact wounds as they're going to have ranks, that kind of a thing. So there's some balance there. Sure, they're going to do wounds back, but... At the beginning of every phase, any unit in base contact with a fear-causing creature has to test um, every close combat. So if they fail, their weapon skill gets reduced. Well, Ogre's weapon skill isn't that great, but now their weapon skill, if they fail their test, which happens fairly often, um, especially if you're taking it every close combat phase, there's more chances that your ogres are going to you know, have a good round of combat where they're just going to clean out a bunch of guys, make a bunch of combat resolution, peel off some of those back ranks, and really have a chance to break units in a head-to-head -head match. Now, if you combine that with flank tactics, if you're hitting them from the side, take away their plus three from the rank bonus, yeah, they're still steadfast, but they don't have three combat resolution at the beginning of the phase. Um, eighth edition, I think, has been well thought out, at least from the preliminary. I haven't played any games with it, but I really think that they kind of took the trades and balances and, and said, okay, if you're a heavy infantry list, you're going to have this bonus. The one army that I do see being a little bit overpowered with the new infantry rules, the Empire. Why? Because of detachments. Detachments have become these special forces of some kind. You know, if something decides to charge in, you have your detachments that are going to get to have free, you know, flanking. Um, it's 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 one of those things that it's like, holy cow, you know, detachments are going to be really worth something now. Uh, the other army that I see is being a little bit, you know, tipped in the the, the overpowered bin, Skaven, simply because of the uh, strength and numbers rule. With steadfast strength and numbers, you know, you're going to have these fat, huge units of Skaven lock into something. And they're going to be unit strength, or they're going to maybe have you know a ton of ranks, say clan rat slaves. You have them ten ranks deep if you want. What'd you spend? A hundred points. You're going to see these huge units, I think, of of uh, slaves with a, a leader giving them uh, re-rollable leadership nine. And that can be kind of nasty, but they're still just slaves. So you're going to you know you're going to eventually have to chop through them all to to beat them. And then you'll be facing more elite troops. Um, so there's some there's some really big bonuses and some decent drawbacks, and I really think that they've taken the scales and, and really evened them out. I'm excited again. Um, haven't been excited to play fantasy in a while. This new edition has gotten me kind of geared back up. I'm gonna start pulling out the ogres. I've got a couple of uh, uh, box sets and a battalion that I need to start painting because I'm gonna need more infantry really looks like the game sizes have been pushed up too. I wouldn't be surprised if you know your regular size game is 2,500 points with um, it not being uncommon to be playing 3,000 point games just with the way that they've done the whole shift in, uh, in how you select armies now and with the whole change to how infantry works and how much better infantry is. You know, you're not gonna have one lion chariot charge into this huge block and break them because he had one good round of rolling, you know, yeah. He's going to do a ton of wounds maybe when he first collides, but that unit he collides with has ranks. They're steadfast. They've got, you know, stubborn leadership. That chariot's going to get decimated in the next couple of rounds because it has nothing going for it. You know, combined charges with a lot of chariots coming in, there's potential there, but I really think that GW's done a great job in making the game a little more balanced um, to make every army a competitive army. Um, and they've nerfed some of those higher-powered armies that were just like magical forces, like Vampire Counts and, uh, and, and Chaos. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for checking this out. Uh, hey, Sean, haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Uh, maybe I'll swing by, see how things are going down there at Blue Table. Things look to be you know, going pretty good for you. Glad to see you're still in business. 
Um, the economy has been rough. I know how that goes. But uh, peace out, guys. Scrag 101, out of here.